Hello. Lovely sunny day, but I'm not out on the bike. I'm in the garage, in the workshop. And look around you. Yes, I thought I'd do a slight variation on the bicycle maintenance with a fairly average mechanic and talk about a few bits and pieces of information, guidance, advice, whatever you want to call it, for the new cyclists. Yeah, I suppose you could say stuff I wish I'd known, stuff I wish I'd known before I started cycling, that I had a video that I could watch that said to me all the little tips and tricks and secrets. This isn't going to be all of them, but it's going to be just a few things that I think are quite important. So number one, guys, number one, uh, guys and uh, girls, number one, join a cycling club. Why should you join a cycling club? Well, the thing about cycling is that if you do it on your own, it's a pretty solitary activity. But if you do it with others, it gains a lot more enjoyment. And a cycling club, and there are loads of them around. I belong to one called the Old Portlands, based in South London, or Kent, if you like. It's a fairly small club, but we're very friendly. And you'll find that cycling clubs are friendly. They welcome cyclists, they'll show you the ropes, they'll teach you stuff, and you'll get to ride with like-minded people. What's not to like? Join a cycling club. They're very cheap. Ours is only £20 a year. £20 a year. What do you get for that? Well, you get to join a group of like-minded people and that's what cycling is all about so that's my first piece of advice join a club incidentally if you want to know where to find a club you can google local cycling clubs in your area or go on to the british cycling website they've got a lot of information there about local clubs or if you're out on the road riding your bike you're bound to see club riders riding along because they'll be wearing their club kit if you stop at a cafe within social distancing rules of course uh, have a chat with them, find out which club they belong to, where they're based, get a bit of information from them, get some contact details and take it from there. Number two. Well, number two is to quote my good friend Lance Armstrong. It's not about the bike. It doesn't matter what sort of bike you have. If you've got an expensive bike, if you've got a cheap bike, if you've got a carbon bike, if you've got an aluminium bike, if you've got a steel bike, if you've got a titanium bike, if you've got a three-wheeler bike, got one you nicked off your kids, not one you got one you nicked off your grandparents. A tricycle. It doesn't matter. It matters a bit. The more you start cycling, the more you get into it and you'll see that the bike does make a difference. Having a good quality bike, a lighter bike, a bike with better components, it's more fun to ride, it's faster, it'll help you go further, it's altogether more enjoyable. So you don't have to have a posh bike, you don't have to have an expensive bike, but once you can't start cycling, by golly, you're going to wish you could get a nicer bike. But don't be sucked in. Most of the cycling magazines are just adverts for bike companies and articles about bike stuff that you think you need. You don't really need it. If you want to get it, get it. But don't think you have to have it. And if you happen to join a cycling club that's a bit snobbish about what sort of bike you ride, well, take my advice, guys. Go and join a cycling club that couldn't care less what sort of bike you ride so long as you're riding your bike. Next piece of advice. If you want to get better, ride your bike. Fausto Coppi, great Italian cyclist of the pre-war and post-war years, had a little phrase he said, ride your bike, ride your bike, ride your bike. And that is the only way you're going to get better, you're going to get stronger, you're going to get fitter, you're going to get faster, if that's your bag. It doesn't have to be. But if you want to get better riding your bike, the only thing to do is ride your bike. If you want to get better riding up hills, ride up hills. As Eddie Merckx, the great Belgian cyclist, said, if you want to get... Uh, no, don't... No, what did he say? He said, don't buy upgrades, ride upgrades. Yes, I'm not sure if the translation perhaps lost something a bit from the Belgian into English, but what he was saying was... Don't think that just buying a new bike or a better bike or a more expensive bike or a faster bike is going to make you faster up the hills. Although, remember, point two, it is a little bit about the bike. The way to get better on the hills or just riding your bike is to ride your bike as much or as little as you can, but just turn those bloody pedals. It's the way to get your legs stronger and it will work. When I look at other cyclists, I think I wish I was stronger than them. Or I wish I was as strong as them. 
And then I look at the cycling that they do and I see that they're doing 200 miles a week and I'm doing 100 miles a week or whatever it is, then it strikes me, well, actually, Julian, you know why they're stronger than you. They do more cycling. So if you want to get better, ride your bike more. Punctures. If you ride a bike, you're going to get punctures. There ain't no way around that, guys. You can ride a million miles and never have a puncture, but then when you ride that million and first ride, you're going to get a puncture. You are going to get punctures. You may be lucky and not get very many. You may be lucky and only get one. You may be unlucky and get 10 or 20 in a space of six months, which I got last year. But whatever happens, you're going to get punctures. So learn how to fix a puncture. There is a video in this series about how to change your inner tube. It's not difficult. It takes a little bit of practice. Generally, people will help you out on the road, but don't rely on people to help you out on the road. You must learn how to change your own inner tube and how to fix your own punctures. And when you're out riding, make sure you carry a spare inner tube, you carry some tire levers, and you carry a pump. If you don't have those three items, you cannot fix a puncture. So learn a lesson, do it. If you want to cycle seriously, and I suppose by what I mean in this context by seriously, is you want to ride a road bike and you want to join a club and you want to go a bit faster, wear a helmet, always wear a helmet. Most clubs these days, it is compulsory. It also makes sense. If you're just doing pootling around on a old bike, you're going to the shops, you're riding on cycle paths, you're just getting used to it, you wish the world was more like Holland, fine, don't wear a helmet. But if you're going to be riding on the road in a group at a certain speed, wear a helmet. It may well save your life. Having said that about helmets, at some stage, it may be soon, it may be later, it may not be for a while, it may be tomorrow, but you will fall off. You will crash. It may be someone else's fault. It may be your fault. It may be a slippery road. It may be you get caught in a ditch. It may be a car that pushes you too far to the side. But one day, and that day might come pretty soon, you will fall off. Now, the chances are very high that you will not hurt yourself seriously. You may have a few scrapes. You may have a few, few bruises. If you're very, very unlucky, you might break your collarbone or a finger or something like that. But as a rule, as a general rule, you will not hurt yourself badly, but you will fall off. So get used to it. There's nothing to worry about. It happens to all of us. Sometimes it's our own fault. Most of the times that I've come off the bike, it's frankly been my own fault. But it doesn't really matter whether it's somebody else's fault or if it's your fault. You will fall off the bike. So get used to it. Wear a helmet brush yourself off, scrape yourself down, get back on the bike, carry on riding. Obviously, if you land on your head or if you cause an injury to some other person or if you're in an accident with a car or something like that, that's different. But if it's a fairly minor accident or a fairly minor falling off, which most fallings off are, not all fallings off, but most fallings off are, then get used to it. It's part of cycling life. Now, most of the fancy newfangled editions that you might see added to a bike or seen on a bike or seen in a magazine like tubeless tires or disc brakes or electronic gears, even electric gears. If you want them, get them. You don't really need them. Many of them are nice to have. Many of them help you in lots of different ways, but you don't have to have them. But the one thing that is particularly useful I would say, if you get into what I'm going to call serious cycling, which is not to decry those people who just do ordinary kind of day-to-day -day cycling. If you want to do serious cycling, riding fast in a group, in a club, clipless pedals. Clipless pedals are what allows your shoes, special cycling shoes, to be locked to the pedals. It makes your pedaling more efficient. It means you won't slip off the pedals, particularly in the rain or if you're trying to go quickly. Clipless pedals are a distinct advantage on the bike and it is one thing that I would recommend that you get into once you've got used to your cycling, you're happy with it, you want to spend a bit more money on it, you've joined a club, clipless pedals. It's the way to go, believe me. There is a video in this series about which different or which about the different types of clipless pedals there are, the different types of shoes that go with them, the pros and cons of them. Watch that video and it will show you some useful information. But clipless pedals, good upgrade, worth doing. 
Not sure if Eddie Merckx mentioned them, but then Eddie Merckx wasn't riding in an area of clipless pedals. If he was, he would have recommended them too. Next piece of advice, do your own thing. If you don't want to wear Lycra, don't wear Lycra. If you want to use a triple chain set, use a triple chain set. If you want to ride an old steel bike, ride an old steel bike. If you don't want to join a club, don't join a club. If you want to lose, use the lowest gears around, use the lowest gears around. If you don't want to go fast, don't go fast. If you don't want to race, don't race. If you don't want to do sportives, don't do sportives. If you don't want to do crit racing, don't do crit racing. It's up to you. Do your own thing. Find your way as a cyclist. Find the things that you enjoy about cyclist, cycling and then do them more often. You may find you want to try those various things as time goes on. On the other hand, you may find you just want to continue doing what you're doing. You may not want to join a club. You may just want to ride on your own. Go out and do 10 or 20 or 30 or 100 miles or whatever it is around your local roads or far away. It doesn't really matter. But do your own thing. Just enjoy yourself. Cycling is a wonderful sport. It's a wonderful activity. It's a wonderful hobby. It's a wonderful recreational thing to do. But do what you like doing. If you're going to ride with other people, and especially if you're going to join a club, one thing that you do need to learn, and one thing that a club will teach you, is how to ride safely in a group. How to ride safely in a group, whether it's 3, 5, 10, 20, 30, 50 riders, whatever it is, is a, it's a skill, it's an art, there are things you should learn that will keep you safe, and more importantly, or just as importantly, will keep the other riders around you safe. Because notwithstanding social distancing rules, I know at the moment you're supposed to keep two metres away from other cyclists, but when that changes, and presumably at some stage it will, and you ride close to other cyclists, it's very easy if one of you does something silly or one of you makes a mistake to bring the whole group down in a big crash. But if you know what you're doing and you trust the other riders around you to know what they're doing, then you'll feel much safer, you'll feel much more comfortable, and if you're riding in a group, you'll all go much quicker. But it is something worth learning. Make sure you learn it if you're in a club, and if you're not in a club or you don't want to join a club and you're still going to ride with other groups of people, then read up on some of the skills and tricks involved in riding a group. In riding in a group, it's certainly important and it's certainly worth doing. Now, whether you join a club or not, and you just ride out on your own, uh, on the roads, doing your own local routes, some things may happen to you. You may have an accident, you may have a crash, you may have a puncture which you're struggling to fix, you may have some other mechanical problem with your bike and you don't know how to fix that. Although if you watch some of the, watch some of the videos in this series, Bicycle Maintenance of the Fairly Average Mechanic, you will learn how to do most of the stuff that is important. But, but, other cyclists will help you out. And in order to keep that uh, karma, is that what they call it? In order to keep that karma going, you should offer to help other cyclists. You may not be able to do much for them, but if you see somebody stuck at the side of the road with a bike and they don't seem to be going anywhere, ask them if they're all right. They will appreciate your offer of assistance. And even if you can't do much, maybe you just need to lend them a phone so they can make a phone call. It's worth it. So help others. Others will help you. It's one of the wonderful things about cycling that we all stick together. And it's a key part of cycling. It's one of the things you should learn in a group. And it's one of the things... Well, one of the things that you should learn in a club, and if you don't learn it in a club or you don't want to join a club, then do it anyway. It keeps the world turning. And the last lesson is about Strava. Now, you may have heard about Strava. Strava is a, a, an app. It's a um, program that allows you to record your rides, see where you went, how fast you went, what routes you traveled, and then you can look back and you can see the routes you went on and how fast you went. And if you pay a premium subscription, then you can, or rather if you pay a subscription, you'll be able to see leaderboards and you'll be able to see who's the fastest. And if you ride in a club, you can compare yourself against other riders. It's a fun thing to do. It's an enjoyable thing to do. And if you get stuck into it, it can be quite addictive. But, 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 and here is the big but. You do not have to be on Strava. If you don't want to be on Strava, don't be on Strava. I have a mate who's been cycling for 
40, 50 years, longer than I have. He's never been on Strava. What he gets is a calendar at the beginning of the year and he writes down in longhand how many miles he's done. And that shows him the information that he wants to know. How many miles has he done this week, this month, this year? you don't want to be on Strava, don't worry about it. You don't have to be on Strava. If you join a club and everybody says, oh, aren't you on Strava? You say, no, I don't want to be on Strava. It's perfectly okay to do your own thing and not get on Strava. The final thing I would say is patronise your local bike shop. Try not to buy everything online from uh, Chain Reaction or Wiggle or Amazon. Try and get to know the people in your local bike shop. You will find them helpful. You'll find them knowledgeable. You'll find them friendly. They will help you out. They'll give you advice. Most shops, not all, will price match against the uh, online retailers, but that shouldn't be your only reason for going there. It's the service that you get, and at some stage, you will need a local bike shop to help you out. And if you don't patronise them, they will not survive. Having said that, if you can do some of your basic maintenance on your bike, that will save you quite a bit of money in basic stuff. If you go into a shop and ask them to fix a puncture for you, they will charge you generally about 10 quid or so. It depends on the shop. That is something that you ought to be able to do yourself. And as I say earlier in this video, you must learn how to fix your own punctures. So if you watch these series of videos, bicycle maintenance with a fairly average mechanic, you will learn to see most or learn to be able to do most of the things that will keep your bike working smoothly and on the road. And then you take it to the shop when you've got a particular problem, something you can't sort, something that's gone wrong, something you can't uh, analyze, you can't define what the situation is. But if you need to buy something, try and go to your local bike shop. Try not to give all your money to online retailers. And that's it. Lessons information, guidance, hints, tips, whatever you want to call it, for the new cyclist. My one big piece of advice is bike riding is a wonderful thing to do. Get a bike, and as Fausti Coppi said, Fausto Coppi even, ride your bike, ride your bike, ride your bike. See you next time.